The world is at a crossroads. In many countries, the gap between rich and poor continues to get wider. More than 150 million children are engaged in child labour. And there are more refugees on Earth than ever before. Globalisation seems to have failed. We're seeing people close their borders. We're seeing countries become more nationalistic. Environmental risks, from climate change to water security, are getting worse. We are seeing the impacts of climate change across the world, and that is bound to get worse and worse. And nine years on from the start of the global financial crash, the world is facing another crisis. We need fundamental change, and business can be part of the solution. There's a new opportunity emerging to help solve some of the planet's biggest challenges. November 2016. Some of the business world's most powerful leaders meet in London to discuss the crucial role their companies need to play. At a time when we have enormous pressure on the planetary boundaries, when too many people are left behind, we said we need to have a proactive business model that actually addresses the world's challenges. A number of business leaders founded the Business and Sustainable Development Commission, an organization committed to a set of globally agreed goals to eliminate poverty, reduce inequality, and help save the planet. Around this table are some hugely powerful companies. We want to stimulate a discussion amongst us all about how we can really pump up our level of ambition. It's an ambition to build a more inclusive world, where no one is sidelined by economic progress. But it's also a world that is good for business because for leaders who embrace the global goals, there are huge rewards to be won. It starts with what happens if we don't do it, which is you know, a real contraction of the global economy because of rising security costs, rising energy costs, rising land costs. But the upside is a prize of anything between 12 trillion and 30 trillion dollars. These are the potential gains from rising to one key challenge meet our needs today without compromising the ability of future generations to do the same. In Ivory Coast, years of civil war devastated a generation and left many farmers living below the poverty line. In 2008, global agricultural business Olam International bought a cotton processing factory. Their goal was to help smallholders turn their lives around. The company started by recruiting local trainers to bring the farmers together and build up their skills. Nous dispensons euh, des formations sur les meilleures pratiques agricoles pour le coton à tous les producteurs que nous encadrons. Avoir de la qualité du coton est une affaire non seulement pour eux-mêmes, parce que c'est comme ça ils peuvent avoir le meilleur prix. C'est aussi notre affaire. Ah, ok. On veut quoi, Nénia Ok, ok, il faut Watara, a father of eight, is one of many local farmers who are quick to see results. Surtout dans la route de Nénia, on m'a pied bon. Quand on Training was just the start. In 2015 alone, Olam provided smallholders with loans worth $19 million to buy seeds, fertilizers, equipment, and cattle to help them further boost their output. It's all hands on deck when the truck arrives to take the farmer's cotton to be processed. But not long ago, they'd have struggled to get a bumper crop like this out of the village. The problem of the war, the infrastructure, ne bougeait pas, n'évoluait pas. Donc chaque année, nous avons un programme de reprovillage des voies pour permettre justement l'accès des marchés des producteurs vers les usines. Parce que si tu n'as pas l'accès au marché, à la fin, ta production reste à ta main et tu n'auras aucun bénéfice. When it arrives at their processing plant, 
Olam also reaps the benefits. Better quality cotton and more of it. And there's another reason why it pays for the company to make the farmer's interests its own. We had to work very closely with the government to make sure that the farmer got a fair price. At the same time, if there was no margin for the exporters like us, then there wouldn't be incentive for us to support that program. We have benefited because we maintain the chain of custody of the cotton all the way from the farmer's farm to the textile mill. So that gives us a significant additional pricing power with our customers. Nurturing the workers and protecting the supply chain has helped the company more than double its volumes. But sustainability is new territory for business. It requires long-term commitment and the willingness to work in new ways with partners in government and civil society. The only way we can build an enduring sustainable business is to do things right and that will make us more profitable and more valuable. The incentive is a $12 trillion prize, of which food and agriculture could account for nearly a quarter. In other sectors too, pioneering companies are innovating to solve urgent social problems, and they're making a profit. From GSMA working with mobile operators to provide agricultural information services to remote farmers, to Grundfos using a network of ATMs to deliver clean water to the slums of Nairobi, and M-Pesa, a mobile money service from Safaricom that brings banking to communities where financial institutions are out of reach. Some of the world's biggest and most established firms are also finding good reason to put the global goals at the heart of their business strategy. We focus on deforestation, greening our total value chain, cutting out of fossil fuel if reduction in plastic. And it's not surprising that these brands that are even more addressing these purposes are actually growing faster and actually ultimately are more profitable as well. Sustainable business could create 380 million jobs by 2030 in the developing world, where they're needed most. I don't think it's so much about new financing as it is to apply our existing finance appropriately. I think it's really important to take capital to the frontier markets because those are the places where there are many people who are without jobs. And if we could empower them, if we could finance their activities, we will create new areas of demand and just a bigger global take. It could be a virtuous circle with the benefits felt in the developing world and rich world alike and inequality tackled wherever it's found with innovation and investment. In the United States, a virtual schools program supported by Pearson improves access to quality education through online programs for young people, no matter where they live. Back in the Ivory Coast, the material benefits are clear. There's real value in helping to transform society. Au niveau même de la personne lui-même, il doit de bonne santé. Au niveau physique, il doit de bonne santé. Lui et sa famille. Leadership has come through as probably the absolute missing chromosome in all of this. If you don't have people who've gotten the spark, who will lead their companies with this new sense of purpose and mission, then the whole thing is likely stillborn. It is a new kind of social contract, a triangular partnership between government, business, and civil society. It's a world which is really investing today for a better future for all of us 20 years down the road. The potential rewards are enormous. For the business leaders who embrace the future. For the communities who'll be their partners. And for our planet. <laughs>